rifles and pistols and shotguns, oh my. Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton, I'm your humble narrator, and welcome to Hard West. A very, very dark, XCOM-ish like, uh, strategy game with cowboys. Lots of reloading of old-timey weapons and lots of shooting fellow cowboys in the face. There's also a greedy, corrupt government and all sorts of goodies like that. So, uh, let's have a little listen. I love the voice acting here. You were six years old when you traveled the Oregon Trail with your mother and father. Food was scarce, and your father, despite being a fine tracker and a crack shot, failed to find any game. It was as if every animal on the trail was spooked by some evil force. Your old man found a small village and tried to trade equipment for food, but this village was overrun by outlaws. They took your mother and decided to trade you and your father to white slavers. But he managed to break free, told you to hide, and set out to save her. So while there's not a lot of uh, establishment with a connection with the mother and whatnot, it does make a, a pretty bold statement. Um, so here we're just looking at a little bit of gameplay as we're taking pot shots back and forth with this fella. He's not taking any cover, which is not going to be good, but I need to reload before I pop him one. And another guy. I guess they're just all drunk cowboys coming out of the woodwork. They don't really give a shit about taking cover or whatever. There it is. She was Rescuer. nowhere to be found. Let's do it. He saw the box. I'm coming home, mama. What was in it? Oh. The simple wooden box contained a head. Your mother's head. You and your father were alive, but all your supplies were destroyed. No way you'd make it to Oregon now. Your father decided to stay put and build a life right there. Many years passed and you grew up. You became a man. So a very, very dark uh, introduction to the game and really sets the tone that it is the hard west. Some scenarios will drop you into the overworld map where you'll be left panning for gold and trying to scrounge items which can be used for combat. It's a really interesting addition to the game that adds a lot of replayability. There are also cards that you can find that give your character special abilities and things like that. And it adds a lot, again, to the replayability because the cards are different every time you uh, start a new file. Let's check out this meadow. No, it's a young native woman with a basket picking flowers. Uh, let's try to find the plants for ourselves. Observant and lucky you picked the correct herbs. Hell yeah, we got three of them shits. I'm sure that'll come into play later. So we'll go over here to do some mining. We have 35 gold to start with. Uh, buried under heart rock. Let's try to rinse the placer gold. Get a little pan, do some panning, and we actually made 16 bucks from that, so we are able to now uh, do the $40 one. Excavate the deeper gold, yes. And actually we only made $8 on that one. Farty. So father insists we uh, get some help from the Mexicans, and he sends a vaquero to help us out, which is really nice. Quite thoughtful of him. So we got Cheech has joined the posse, and we'll need to go back to our homestead. The bandits were coming. It was the hour of reckoning. And here we have a setup screen. Um, you can equip secondary weapons, switch those weapons with T during combat. Doesn't cost an action point. Um, and then you've also got like healing herbs and things like that, which you can, I think we can give one to each character. That'll be a good idea. Yes. And you also have cards. Uh, right now we have the Jack of Hearts, which ravages an enemy not protected by sunlight. Interesting. I'm going to give these both to Warren because father ends up running away anyways. And Ten of Spade lets me ricochet and bounce bullets off things, which should be super, super useful. So we'll hop into it, see how we go. I don't even see where they're coming from. I guess everybody's at a decent position. Move daddy over here, we'll get Cheech inside, I guess. 
post up over here, young man. I kind of like where he is, I guess. Yeah, you can go over here. How about that? All right, backspace to end the turn. And uh, the enemies descend upon us. So really, really nice aesthetic, really nice models. I like the look of this game, the feel of it, the sounds, the mixing's really good. Um, it's, it's really hard to find blemishes within this game. It takes the XCOM formula, builds on it with the cards and whatnot, uh, building your posse, going to different townships and whatnot, mining for gold. It's super in-depth and super enjoyable, and uh, yeah boy, definitely something I'd recommend taking a look at if you enjoy the strategy genre in any way. Yeah, some fanning. Kill that boy dead. The overworld map combined with the uh, skills and whatnot with the cards makes the game feel really, really in-depth. Offers up some new replayability. Each time you play a scenario, the cards do change up, which I find really interesting. Last time I played through Warren was like a, a scavenger. He could consume corpses to gain back 3 HP, and he could also like find super good weapons on him, which were promptly lost after the battle. So, despite the dark nature, there's also a little bit of humor. Um, it knows when to pull its punches and give it to you super soft, but then there are also times where you will not get out alive. So here we'll just get a little bit of ricochet going with Warren, and uh, you might notice that every time I'm shot at, um, my, lo my luck decreases, and when I'm hit, it increases. Basically, you're spending luck in order to not be hit, uh, so you can kind of cheese your way if your luck is high enough and get one turn out in the open without being blasted to hell. Uh, and it's also spent on some skills, like the shadow skill requires 60 luck to destroy one person, the ricochet requires 20 in order to bounce it off, well, this uh, fountain and or milk can in this case. But it's really, really interesting. I think it offers something new. And uh, let me get into the score breakdown as we try and finish out this fight. So the controls, I've given a 9 out of 10. They are exceedingly good. WASD moves the camera around just like would be expected from any top-down game. The um, walls and such do get in the way just a little bit. You are able to turn with Q and E the camera. So you can work around it. However, when you're finagling around inside a house sometimes it can get a little difficult however that's just the nature of the beast something I also experienced in XCOM um, although a bit less this game definitely uh, packs packs the environment in a bit more than something like XCOM still really enjoyable still really passable 9 out of 10 for the controls fun factor I've given the 10 out of 10 holy crap I love blowing people away it is exceedingly hard to get through scenarios and beat levels and whatnot, but the reward that's offered at the end is usually a more powerful character, some more awesome scenarios, you just want to see where the story goes. I'm really baited to play this game even more after I finish reviewing it. Um, I want to go back through and just see how I can build my characters differently, which is really amazing, adds to the replayability, but we'll get to that when we get to that. The difficulty, I've given a 10 out of 10. If you want this game to be hard, it will be friggin' hard. They've got Iron Man difficulty. Uh, they've also got wounds that affect your characters with debuffs, but then your characters are stronger in the end for living through the debuff. It's really, really awesome. Adds a lot to the gameplay again, and it also increases the difficulty. So 10 out of 10 for that. Replayability, I've given an 8 out of 10. The only reason I knocked a couple points off here was because the game is rather short. There are eight or nine scenarios that you can go through, and granted you can mess around with each one for a couple hours each were you uh, so inclined, but overall I think this game should offer just a little bit more. For the innovation of this game, I gave it an 8 out of 10. I did knock a couple of points off because it is a strategy game when you boil down to it. Despite the darker tones and the awesome abilities and cards that are offered, 
it still falls within the uh, XCOM genre, but there's no shame in that. It definitely builds on that formula and definitely offers something new. So if you're into the strategy genre, check out this game. I implore you, please check out this freaking game. So the aesthetic side, I've given the graphics an 8 out of 10. They are rather nice. I think the character models could be stepped up just a little bit. Uh, it doesn't have to look so cluttered, although that does add to the uh, dark and dirty nature that you do experience throughout every freaking inch of this game. But I, I think overall, really good job. Certainly above the average at, a eight of, at an 8 out of 10. Uh, the music I've given a 10 out of 10. I am not sure what it is about this music. Perhaps it reminds me of Breaking Bad. It has a really country feel twangy and delicious and taps into the, my childhood but even beyond that it's it's got a, a country feel to it which I can really enjoy and I think anybody who enjoys the cowboy style uh, of this game will do the same so definitely well done on the music at a 10 out of 10 the sound effects I've given a 9 out of 10 some of the guns do sound similar when I don't think they should. Rifles and pistols and shotguns, oh my. However, the guns sound really awesome when you're shooting them. You can hear people sniffling about and they'll give away their position. I think that's really awesome. Uh, overall, I think the mixing's really nice. Definitely the voice acting blew me away. So I don't hesitate to give this game a 9 out of 10 for the sound. The story I've given the 9 out of 10, it touches on political themes, it touches on religious themes, it's really the kind of game that makes you ask a lot of questions and something that I feel passionate about. Even though it's dark and they talk about the devil and whatnot and I love Jesus, not the devil, I'm gonna put that on, on record right now on my YouTube channel, I love Jesus. <laughs> But I can still see where they're coming from and it does make you ask questions and wonder about those things that everybody does wonder about and you shouldn't deny yourself from asking those questions. I applaud this game for uh, taking the risk as it were. So definitely a great story with a 9 out of 10. The level design I've given an 8 out of 10 once again. Uh, you kind of feel like a rat trapped in a maze when you get to the house levels. I don't enjoy those as much as the open outdoor levels, but it definitely offers something different, which I think is important. They mix it up between the levels and give you something new to chew on every time, which I think is super, super nice. So. The final score for Hard West is a very respectable 89 out of 100. That is a 4.45 out of 5 stars, 4.5 stars out of 5. Really, really good. This game goes really at the top of my list for one of the 2015 releases. It got in there late, but it freaking got in there strong. I definitely enjoyed it. If you enjoy the strategy genre, I would highly suggest you check it out. Ah. In summation, friends, I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator. If you did enjoy the episode, I hope you will like, comment, and or subscribe. And until the next time, friends, bye-bye! One, two, three, four, goodbye, goodbye, see you again. Goodbye, goodbye, see you, my friends.